welcome to Velocity Time Graphs Distance. Uh, now just before we start, quick reminder that there is a notes jotter available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. Okay, so um, in these, uh, this video what we're looking at is velocity time graphs but we're going to be trying to calculate the distance travelled. Um, now in each case we need to think about how we actually find distance and if we think about our little triangle um, for distance, speed and time, we have distance, speed, time and so we get the distance equals speed times time. Now in this case, if I were looking at the entirety of this section, and I'd be looking at all of this time, but then I have changing speeds all the way through. And so if I want to find speed times, uh, speed times time, well, I have different speeds all the way along. So I can only make an estimate. And that estimate is going to be of the area that is underneath this graph. Because if I do speed times time, well, if I think about it, this section here, if I draw all of this, then I'm doing the speed times the time, and it's forming the area underneath the curve. And I keep going along like that. And so that's exactly what we're going to do in order to find the distance. We're going to use strips in order to do it. And it says, estimate the total distance traveled in the first 10 seconds using five strips of equal width. Well, that means if there are 10 seconds, then obviously we need to use two seconds at a time. And so I'm going to draw, first of all, straight lines, straight up at two seconds, four seconds, six seconds, eight seconds, and 10 seconds. And then what I need to do is I need to form these into shapes which remove the curves. And so the first section, I'm just going to draw in a straight line like that. And then I'm going to join the top of this line to the top of the next line, and the top of this line to the next one, and the top of this line to the top of this one, and the top of this line to the top of that one. And what you'll find is that now, instead of having to try to find the area under a curve, what we're doing is, in sections which I'm going to label, I'm going to label them A, B, C, D, and E, in section A, I've actually just got a triangle. And so all I need to do is a half times base times height. And so that would be, in this case, it's a half of the base, which is 2, and times the height, which in this case is 4.8. And so a half of 2 is 1 times 4.8. Well, that is 4.8 metres. And so the first section, we are saying that they travelled 4.8 metres in the first two seconds. Now, B, B is a trapezium. And so for a trapezium, we need to remember our formula for a trapezium. It is a half brackets a plus b h and what that is a is the length at the top and b is the length at the bottom and the height is the perpendicular height and so again the height is the same as we had previously it's another two and so we've got a half brackets this height here, well, we've already measured the first one as 4.8, but the second height, the green one, well, that is at 8, and it's going to be multiplied by the height, which is 2. And so we can actually discount here the half times the 2, because that just makes 1. And so we've got 4.8 plus 8, well, that is 12.8 metres. And so in the first uh, first section here, B, the first trapezium, we travelled 12.8 metres. In C, we need to do the same again. It's a half times A plus B times H. But again, it's going to be a half times 2 because the height in every case here is 2 centimetres. Oh, sorry, 2 seconds. Therefore, we can actually just say A plus B. So A is 8. And B, in this case, that is going to be at what 9.6 so 
so plus 9.6 and that one equals 8 plus 9.6 will be 17.6 meters in section D we just got to be careful of what the shape is in, in D if we have a look this is a flat line at the top and therefore we have a rectangle and so actually what we have is just 2 as the width times the height which was 9.6 and so that is 19.2 meters and then finally with E we have another trapezium and so again it's going to be a half brackets A plus B times H but again we've got a half times two for the uh, for the um, height and therefore we can just do our a which will be 9.6 and add on the height at the very end and the height at the very end is at 8 and so we have 17.6 meters and if we want to find the total distance traveled well all we need to do is add together each of those heights uh, sorry each of those distances so 4.8 plus 12.8 plus 17.6 plus 19.2 plus 17.6 if we add them all together 4.8 plus 12.8 plus 17.6 plus 19.2 plus 17.6 well we get 72 meters and so over the course of those 10 seconds we traveled 72 meters so then we're then asked is your answer an underestimate or overestimate and we want to give a reason for our answer so it goes back to what we've done with our diagram now if we have a look above the section that we've actually looked at we've got a little bit extra space above and a little bit extra above here and a little bit extra above here and a little bit extra above here and even right at the very start we have a tiny little bit above and so what it's actually saying is in terms of the area under that graph have we used less area than there really is or more area well we have clearly got less area than is under the entire graph and therefore our estimate is an under estimate and that is because all of our lines if we have a look at them every straight line that we drew in was under the curve and so because it was under the curve it means we have an under estimate all lines drawn were under the curve now if they'd been above which can happen uh, ma mainly that will happen if we have a curve like this so when we draw them in we might end up with straight lines which go above well then we would have overestimates because we would have included space above the curve and so we end with the exam question and it came from the edXL paper and um, the specimen papers higher paper 2 and we've got the velocity in v meters per second of a parachutist t seconds after leaving a plane and we've been asked to work out an estimate for the distance fallen by the parachutist in the first 12 seconds after leaving the plane this time use three strips of equal width so because this is 12 seconds and we want three strips of equal width that's telling us we need to draw a line at four seconds and a line at eight seconds and what we're going to do is as we did before we're going to draw in those straight lines and as we do that we form a triangle at the start and we form two trapezia afterwards and so once again let's just label each section so it's really clear what we're doing so in section a we're going to find the area of that triangle and so it's going to be a half of the base which is 4 and times the height which in this case is 35 and if we do that we have a half times 4 times 35 that's going to be 70 meters in section B well in section B 
we're going to have a trapezium and it's going to be a half of a which is 35 plus b which is 51 and it's going to be times by the height in this case the height is this distance in between the times so that is times 4 and so 35 plus 51 that is 86 and times it by a half times 4 86 times 2 164 and then our final section well C that's going to be another trapezium so it's a half times 51 and in this case the height at the very end we have got as 54 and again that's going to be multiplied by 4 and so 51 plus 54 is 105 and that's going to be times by 2 so 210 meters so across the entire 12 seconds we have 210 164 and 70 all being added together so 13 14 444 meters that is our estimate of how far it has traveled